So in the previous video, you would have seen that we um, arrived in Bundaberg, cleared customs and border force and all that gumph. Um, in this video, yeah, we were based mostly in the Burnett River, um, near the marina in Bundaberg. And from there, we went up to Lady Musgrave Island and uh, down to Fraser Island to the Kingfisher Resort. Uh, so we had a good three weeks. Um, Moana left... Um, after Fraser Island and they settled down south on their way to Sydney for the uh, summer. Our dinghy adventure, we're going down the Burnett River to Bundaberg Town. So instead of catching the bus or the taxi, we're going on uh, Moana's taxi. Okay, well done Skipper, first officer. Uh, neatly doing the ropes up there. <laughs> First officer. <Yeah. laughs> Bit damp. And here we are in the uh, Burnett River, Bundaberg Central. Wow. Some liverboard boats all anchored in the middle of the river. We're about 10 kilometers up the river from the sea. So we explored Bundaberg and uh, restocked our uh, beer um, reserves. Um, so yeah, successful mission by a boat to Bundaberg by dinghy. And it's the 21st of October and we are just leaving uh, Bundaberg Port Marina, headed for Lady Musgrave Island, the very bottom of the, or the bottom island of the um, Great Barrier Reef. So you uh, can spend a few days there in the, in the lagoon there hopefully. This is the Lady Musgrave uh, boat that runs up and down there daily, um, so I'm sure they'll beat us. afternoon and we're arriving here um, at Lady Musgrave Island. A few boats anchored outside here. That is Lady Musgrave Island. It's really just a patch of trees on some sand. And you can see in the background that's inside the reef. Some boats are already there. We're going to have to squeeze in on the inside. Let us first get through that channel. Coming up to the entrance to the channel. Lady Musgrave Island. This is a picture I um, burgled from the website, but you can see the lagoon clearly and the surrounding reef um, and a great anchorage, um, very protected and plenty of space actually on the inside. And sundowners uh, here at Lady Musgrave is Moana and Audacia has just arrived, Dave and Charlie. And ah, oh, very cool. Um, we'll explore the reef above and below of the water. And it's an absolutely stunning day here on Lady Musgrave Island in the lagoon. There's Viento Del Mar over there. And I don't think the colour of the water comes out on the video, but it's 
incredibly turquoise blue. Uh, that's the island. So we have this ongoing um, sort of competition with Moana as to who can out, out adventure the other. Um, and on this occasion we decided, okay, we'll, we'll call a truce and we went uh, snorkeling together. arrived in Moana for uh, sundowners and a bit of dinner. Look at that, stunning afternoon. There she is, uh, South African flag proudly flying after a double win earlier today or yesterday. And this is the anchorage. And the sun, it's going to be a great sunset. Look at that. That. Wow. Oh, stunning. to go and um, see the bird life, incredible bird life on this island. through the center of Lady Musgrave Coral Island and we're on this path lots of birds you can hear them in the background in fact whew, they're dive bombing me because unfortunately I'm going to have to disturb them to stay on the path here but they're not that keen to move I guess they're claiming rights. So as you may have noticed, sundowners is a big part of uh, yachting life. And yeah, we had sundowners on Viento del Mar, then sundowners on Audacia, um, with Dave and Charlie, and yeah, just a good, a good end to the day. And there's a sunset from Audacia. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Dave and Charlie. Uh, Charlie, look around. Irish has made himself at home, yeah? He's uh, feet up on uh, yeah, his yeah. father's yacht, yeah? His father's yacht. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. You're old enough <laughs> to be mine. <laughs> 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 Another snorkel. We caught this guy hitching a ride on his uh, on his girlfriend's back.
and it's another sailing day. We're sailing back to Bundaberg, leaving um, uh, Lady Musgrave Island. It was very good for a few days. Stalking, unbelievable. Island, island is 1.8 kilometers around circumference of the beach, so it's not big, but uh, very well maintained. Lots of bird life, and it was good. Bundaberg, here we come to hide from the upcoming cold front, which is coming tomorrow morning early. Uh, ah, got a cloud there. Uh, getting the anchor bridle repaired en route because we had to anchor in the river again coming up. So, yeah, big knots, and uh, I'm not great at, I'm not patient at undoing these things. But my anger was soon tempered by our success at getting the spinnaker up, and yeah, a great downwind sail back to Bundaberg. And it's uh, Friday, the 27th of October. It's looking like a good sunset. We're here in the Burnett River off Bundaberg, and uh, we get a special treat for Friday night, the pot, look at that, loaded to the brim, chicken, veg, cabbage, pumpkin, onion, and? I don't know where I'm going to fit the rest of this, I'll have to wiggle it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, not bad for a Friday night. So as I said, we're on the Burnett River here off Bundaberg, and uh, the tide is flying in. Look at this current. Let's see if we can see it. There you go, the tissue. That it just takes off. So it's done about three meters in five seconds. I don't know. You do the maths. So because of the tide um, flowing one way, then the other, and the wind blowing from one direction, then the other, this is the map of our anchor alarm, um, so you can see how we swung around on the anchor from one side to the other over a few hours, all over the place. And the big day finally arrived. It was Rugby World Cup final day, South Africa versus New Zealand. Always a humdinger, so we were fully prepped for it. So here, yeah, the dinner before the Rugby World Cup final. Um, a little R&C, uh, rum and coke. And Irish has got a, I don't know, some sort of juice and rum. And yeah, roll on tomorrow morning. Go the Boca. your flag <laughs> <laughs> raise your flag so it's six o'clock in the morning and the deal was if the box are ahead at half time we'd have a beer and if they head at the final we'll have another another couple few cheers so one of the main reasons for being um, and staying in Bundaberg for a while was the uh, down under rally which is they welcomed us to Australia um, all the boats headed across the Pacific, so here we were, and all their functions. Back at the marina, and that's the boat yard where the boat will be stored, somewhere in there. And this is the cruiser's cove. And some other clown there. <laughs> week was a whole lot of seminars on sailing the Australian coast, which was very well done. So being anchored in the river, we needed a dinghy dock, um, a base, and this was very convenient uh, nearby. Um, all the not allowed signs you can see, and then uh, an, a lovely dinghy dock, very convenient and free, and uh, just over over the back there you can see that's that's town which is really just a small one horse town but yeah convenient short walk away um, things are very organized here in australia for the boats 
Yeah, most mornings our ritual was a, a run and then a coffee at the coffee shop and then back to the dinghy dock, back to the boat. Well, look what I found when I was out for my early morning shuffle. You seem to be able to move better than me. Good morning. How are Roo? And the other main reason for being based in Bundaberg was to get the boat um, uh, a lot of things repaired, the sail repaired after uh, a tough Pacific crossing. And uh, yeah, get everything done before putting the boat into storage for cyclone season. Yeah, you can see me using a sewing awl or a hand stitcher. Um, yes, a must for every boat's uh, toolbox. Very, very handy for repair work. End of another day on the Bundaberg River. It's a Friday, Friday the 3rd of November, and it was a good day. Got a lot of boat work done. Oh, not much else to do here. Um, see, we're in the river here. The marina is just over the uh, breakwater there. And the sun is setting. A couple of boats anchored in the river. But it's uh, very convenient, very pleasant. All along the shore here is the path, the running path, walking path and yeah and uh off on another little sailing adventure we took a few days to sail down to um, harvey bay the kingfisher resort um, on fraser island or kigara as they call it nowadays um yeah nice sail down plenty of boats uh, sailing south so we were accompanied by quite a, a few boats so to keep a lookout and a nice sail down it was a day sail about uh, eight hours down to Harvey Bay. Right, anchored down at uh, Harvey Bay Kingfisher Lodge. And this is our second last passage beer for the Pacific. Cheers, Irish. Uh, cheers, cheers. Good one. To make the most of it. Here we go. Uh, here at the Sunset Bar at uh, Kingfisher Resort. Into Del Mar, anchored up here, and we have just paid about 200 rand per beer <laughs> for that view. <laughs> not the, not Irish, the jetty. Yeah. This is the uh, view from the Sandy Cliff top at uh, Fraser Island looking out over Harvey Bay. Uh, Viento Del Mar anchored down there. Strong currents, uh, tidal flow here. But yeah, it's a nice little running area. You see my uh, path. On we go. That's interesting, you've got to drive on the beaches here at 80 k's now, but everywhere else on 30, at 30. Hmm, we're not even allowed on the beaches with cars. This is the main road through the little uh, Kingfisher Resort. Oh, pretty tidy. Good excuse to run, not run faster than 15 k's an hour. So, approaching Bundaberg, end of our last sail of the season. We're going to anchor in the river, but um, 
Uh, some drama this morning, the starboard engine overheated and we, uh, no, it overheated properly, so I'm hoping there's no engine damage. Uh, we're going to have to take anchor now on one motor. It's not too much of a problem, but uh, it's a little bit more difficult to steer the boat on one motor. Um, that's for anchorage. And yeah, that's, that's the uh, finishing on a high. We've got, um, we're doing about six, seven knots downwind. And that'll be it for sailing for 2023. <laughs> and that's it, anchor down Bundaberg, Burnett River again, and that is our last passage beer. Last of last. <laughs> Almost. Cheers, Irish. Cheers, cheers. Well done, Good thank on. you. And more of the never ending boat work. So that's the hatches all sealed up. Um, doesn't look great, but it's a surefire way of sealing up the rubbers. Uh, they just get old and uh, hard, and then the seal is not that good anymore. Same on this one. Yeah, it's, it takes longer to prepare and tape the surface than it does to seal it up. But uh, yeah, small jobs like these don't want water dripping and leaking into the boat, either at sea or when it stands now for four months in the rain. Other jobs done, uh, you can see the whole uh, sail bag is now wrapped up and bound tight. Hopefully it's anti-cyclone. Uh, pull tight on top, zip, the old sail bag is old and uh, decrepit, but I've wrapped it up best I could. And hopefully that um, stands us good in, in high winds. Keep the sail, mainsail in place. Just a few clips of uh our, our car, our motor vehicle, um, which we launch uh, daily and pull up. So just to show you what's involved in um, getting the car out the garage, so to speak. last sunset from the boat on the water uh, we haul out tomorrow um, last night on the boat uh, well for the season anyway and then we're back while well, I'm back in April next year get ready for sailing around about 1st of May 2024 the final stretch once again, the anchor alarm map, um, you can see how the wind and the tide 
throwing the boat all around the anchor. But yeah, the anchor sat tight. Anchor alarm works, works very well to tell us that we are not uh, drifting down the river or out to sea. For those that are interested, the app we use is Anchor Pro. Our second last night on the boat and we still eating well. Well, we're trying to eat all the food. <laughs> we can't <laughs> leave anything. So we, again, we're eating for all we're worth. Um, Irish is using all the tomato sauce. Um, and uh, massive plates of food. <laughs> <laughs> but we're busy. We've been packing and cleaning the boat the whole day. So we're certainly burning up as we consume. Getting everything all packed and stored, I found this massive crack in the uh, anchor mounting or the anchor windlass. That's the motor that lifts the anchor up. It's mounting it, uh, sort of started ripping away from the uh, it's, it's a box it's mounted on. So preparing to uh, have a brackets made when back in South Africa. And, you, and here you can see the hydraulic steering mechanism. Um, it's mounted onto the rudder, so that steers the boat. And that valve you see there with a little handle on it was faulty, so I need that valve. Uh, well, I'll get a replacement when back in South Africa and uh, fit it when back at the boat in April. And it is haul out day, um, 13th of November. Load out the water and uh, in four days time head home to South Africa to uh, actually do some work and get, uh, get sorted for next season. These big straps holding us. and barnacles but mostly clean. If we hadn't done it in Fiji, it would have been a centimeter or two centimeters thick with barnacles and growth. So very happy with that. Didn't even have to uh, pressure wash it too much. They just gave it a light spray. You don't spray it too hard because you don't spray off all the paint, all the anti-foul paint which costs a lot of money. So you ask them just to tone down the high pressure washer. tip before you haul out. Uh, mark where your bulkheads are. As you can see I put that blue tape over there. That marks where my bulkheads are. So that's the strongest part of the boat of the hull to lift on. It also marks where there's no propeller because I don't want to put those straps on the propeller or the sail drive or the keel. So best you mark where you want to put your... Uh, you can see I've done it on this one as well. Um, mark the bulkheads and they were pretty good they got it spot on on the bulkhead you can't see that one it's behind the strap so we're going into the uh, long-term storage yard a lot of boats here sitting out the cyclone season hey, swings and here we are all packed up our worldly belongings and she will stand there for four or five months this is the storage yard no one's allowed to work on their boats here no one's allowed to live in their boats it's just for boat storage it's quite nice you don't have dust and sort of the fiberglass dust flying everywhere that guy's even stored the back of his bucky in the pickup over there but yeah there she is in the yard and as i say that's it the end of the season and uh, Irish was flying to Auckland to visit his daughter and then on back to South Africa to visit his wife after nine months. But yeah, home time.